Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jerika Duncan in for Nora. Tonight, the brutality of war in Ukraine reaches a new level with what the White House called a barbaric use of military force against innocent civilians. At least 17 people were wounded after a Russian airstrike destroyed a maternity hospital in the city of Mariupol. Ukraine's President Zelensky said there were children under the wreckage and called the strike a war crime. Near the city of Kharkiv, a senior defense official tells CBS News that Russian forces had made moderate progress. In the capital of Kyiv, thousands of civilians are making their way to safety, while a top Ukrainian advisor says ceasefires in many other regions are not holding. And new fears tonight of a possible radiological disaster at two nuclear facilities that are now under control of Russian forces. We have a lot of news to get to tonight, but we're going to start with CBS's Charlie Daggett in Kyiv. Charlie, good evening. Good evening to you, Jerika. A day that began in the hope of a limited ceasefire ended in horror. And a senior U.S. defense official said tonight there are indications that the Russians are using dumb bombs, unguided weapons, increases civilian casualties and damage. A massive airstrike shattered the fragile ceasefire in Mariupol late this afternoon. Emergency teams and soldiers scrambled to evacuate the wounded, including pregnant women from the city's maternity hospital. A hospital for those needing care may be the only place where they felt some measure of security, but it seems nothing is off limits to the Russian onslaught. The blast destroyed the complex inside and out, the shattered nursery, a blood-stained mattress. The size and the depth of the crater and the surrounding debris and destruction evidence of its ferocity. The besieged port city in the south has come under heavy Russian bombardment that's cut off electricity and water to more than 400,000 people. City officials say at least 1,200 civilians have been killed since the war began. Images show city workers placing bodies into a mass grave. <laughs> Another attack struck a residential area in the city of Mikolov. The city of Chernihiv in the north has been pummeled too. Vyakoslav Zaporets didn't wait for a break in the fighting to rescue these children. He drove to Chernihiv and braved an intense aerial bombardment overnight to take nine children and their mothers into the relative safety of his home outside of Kyiv. I feel it is my mission to stop kids from hearing or seeing the war, he told us, and the Russians need to stop. Is he a hero? Yes, as, as one of the rarest heroes, I think. 18-year-old Ilya lived through hell. Can you describe what it's like? I don't know how to describe when you feel like rockets are exploding, exploding uh, upon your head. 11-year-old Angelina told us she had a good life before the war. There were no explosions. She said we could sleep at night. More than anything, she wants to go back home and see the father she left behind. Adding yet another threat to civilians, the White House today warned that Russia might be planning to use chemical or biological weapons to create a false flag operation to then blame on Ukraine. Sharika? Charlie, thank you for your reporting tonight in Kyiv. The Pentagon is rejecting a plan to provide MiG fighter jets to Ukraine, calling it a high-risk venture. CBS's David Martin is at the Pentagon with more. As Vice President Harris became the latest high-ranking official to visit Poland, the Biden administration threw cold water on a plan to give Polish MiG-29s to Ukraine, saying it risks setting off a wider war with Russia. The intelligence community has assessed the transfer of MiG-29s to Ukraine may be mistaken as escalatory and could result in a significant Russian reaction that might increase the prospects of a military escalation with NATO. Poland had offered to transfer its MiG-29s to a U.S. Air Force base in Germany where Ukrainian pilots could pick them up and fly them back to defend their homeland. But almost all of Ukraine is now in range of Russian anti-aircraft batteries, limiting the use its Air Force could make of additional jets. The Ukrainian Air Force currently has several squadrons of fully mission-capable aircraft. We assess that adding aircraft to the Ukrainian inventory is not likely to significantly change the effectiveness 
of the Ukrainian Air Force relative to Russian capabilities. The Pentagon moved Patriot air defense missile batteries into Poland to defend against possible Russian airstrikes in retaliation for the thousands of anti-tank missiles and other weapons being shipped through Poland into Ukraine. According to a senior defense official, several hundred Russian vehicles have been destroyed, captured, or simply abandoned. That 40-mile-long Russian convoy northwest of Kyiv is still stopped in its tracks. But the Pentagon estimates that after two weeks of fighting, 90% of Russia's combat power remains intact. In the battle for control of the sky, the Pentagon says Ukraine needs anti-aircraft missiles more than jet fighters and is asking countries that use the same kind of missiles to send them to Ukraine. Jerika? David Martin, thank you. Congress has reached a bipartisan deal to provide $13.6 billion in aid for Ukraine as part of an overdue spending package, and it couldn't come soon enough. The humanitarian crisis in Ukraine is worsening, but the relief effort is growing. CBS's Chris Livesay reports. It's a fundamental principle of conflicts. Infantry wins battles, but logistics wins wars. Here in Lviv, Ukraine, truckloads of water, food, clothing, toilet paper are packed, sorted, and loaded by an army of volunteers. Less than two weeks ago, this building was Ukraine's biggest arts complex, and Yuri Popovich was just a software engineer. Seeing Russians bombing uh, kindergartens, Child's hospitals, wild animals don't act like that. This like devil walking on the ground. Today, he's coordinating a massive relief effort for Ukraine's worsening humanitarian crisis. 28-year-old driver Mikhailo is also helping by taking his big rig on a three-day journey deep into eastern Ukraine. I'm a bit worried, he says. Have you ever done something this dangerous before? Never. And with that, he loads up his truck, taking with him life-saving aid in the hopes of a nation under siege. Slavo Ukraini, he says. Glory to Ukraine. Chris Lipse, CBS News, Lviv, Ukraine. Vladimir Putin has effectively made independent reporting a war crime in his country. Many U.S. and Western media outlets have pulled out of Russia for fear that journalists may be jailed. Well, Steve Rosenberg of our partner at the BBC is one of few Western journalists still broadcasting from Moscow. He has a reaction tonight on major U.S. businesses like McDonald's seizing operations there. At McDonald's, final orders. It's suspending business in Russia over what it calls the needless human suffering unfolding in Ukraine. All Western businesses are shutting down. Everyone who can is leaving. will be left isolated. Back in the USSR, happier times. When McDonald's opened up here, it felt then as if Russia was getting an appetite for good relations with the West. But it feels now that that's all gone. And instead, Russia's increasingly isolated. International brands are vanishing from Moscow shopping centers. But Russians have less money to spend here anyway. Sanctions have caused the value of the ruble to plunge. But those who back Moscow's onslaught in Ukraine, many of them claim they couldn't care less about global corporations disappearing the Russian market. The era of post-Soviet colonization by the West started with the uh, arriving of McDonald's to Russia. And the era of sovereign greater Russia starts with McDonald's leaving it. So have a nice trip. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, the CBS News, Moscow. With gas prices hitting a new record high today, some economists are warning the ripple effects of higher prices on shipping and travel could weaken the overall U.S. economy. We get more now on this from CBS's Errol Barnett. 
The war in Ukraine continues to push fuel prices across the U.S. to record highs. I don't even think $100 is going to get me half a tank. The national average jumping $0.08 cents overnight to $4.25 per gallon, $0.60 cents higher than last week. The recent U.S. ban on Russian oil will keep pushing prices higher. It's disappointing news for rideshare drivers nationwide. A couple months ago, it cost me like uh, $35, $40. Right now, I'm doing 65, 70. For Uber driver Babakar Manning, waiting outside Washington's Reagan National Airport, it's taking a toll. It's hurting so bad because you can't make anything. The fares remains the same, but you're spending more on uh, gas, so it eats up from our wallet. Air travelers are also feeling squeezed. Jet fuel costs up more than 50% since the invasion prompted Alaska and Allegiant to cut flights. And airfares are higher everywhere. Prices this week are already up 20% and they're going to grow higher. At least for the next foreseeable future, airfares have nowhere to go but up. It is frustrating for Lizette Rivero, a registered nurse in Pennsylvania. It was really hard. Her original plan to take her grandson to see family in the Dominican Republic might now be on hold since ticket prices have doubled in recent weeks. It's changing a lot of things because everything is going up, so we have to do what's best at the moment. Now, since these prices will only continue to creep up, AAA advises that if you want to save a little bit of money, make sure the tires on your vehicle aren't underinflated. That, they say, can decrease gas mileage by up to 10%. And if you plan to fly at all this summer, the best advice on that front, Jerika, is to purchase those tickets as soon as possible. All right. Any way to save? Thank you, Errol. Well, it's not just fuel costs hitting records. Prices are up across the board, and inflation is getting most of the blame for the sticker shock. But a CBS News investigation found that corporate greed is also a major factor. CBS's Manuel Bajorquez explains. Hi, baby. For Selena Flores and her family, it's no longer about stretching the budget. It's about what gets cut. It was me at every meal, and now it's maybe two or three days out of the week. The monthly grocery bill for this family of four has nearly doubled, she says. They now rely on a monthly food donation from this nonprofit in Immokalee, Florida, to make ends meet. We're just trying to keep up with everything, and the prices keep going up. The biggest food price hikes are in meats, with pork and beef up 14 to 20 percent from a year ago. Food companies and some economists say pandemic disruptions, inflation, and high demand are to blame. But others question whether there's more at play. Ricardo Salvador is with the Union of Concerned Scientists, a nonprofit advocacy group. You're seeing just orders of magnitude greater uh, profit that are not justified by the actual rate of inflation or their increased cost. We pulled the quarterly reports on Tyson, the nation's largest meat processor. The company posted $3 billion in profit in 2021 and over a billion dollars just last quarter. That means profits were up a staggering 48 percent, even as inflation is hurting American families. A big reason for those skyrocketing profits, a 31 percent price hike on beef, 20 percent on chicken and 13 percent on pork. This was the company's CEO on an earnings call last month. We're not asking customers or the consumer ultimately to pay for our inefficiency. Uh, we're asking them to pay for inflation. In a statement, Tyson told us economists and industry analysts confirmed that today's higher meat prices are a direct result of constrained supplies due to the labor shortage, higher input costs for such things as grain, labor, and fuel, and stronger consumer demand. The other major U.S. meat suppliers are also posting similar profits. Some analysts, like Salvador, believe the numbers don't add up. Well, they're clearly taking advantage, you know, they're profiteering, and uh, we're not the only ones to observe that. Even President Biden is weighing in, blasting the meat industry in his State of the Union address. Capitalism without competition is exploitation. It drives up profits. Just four companies control up to 85% of the nation's beef, pork, and chicken markets. That means they can name whatever price they want, and if you want to buy meat, you're paying that price. So there is nothing to prevent the prices from continuing to go up? Correct. As long as there isn't competition that will help drive down the prices so that they have a reason to actually be more reasonable. And that's why Selena Flores is worried about her children's future. Prices are going up and they're going to continue to go up. There's no stopping it. 
I have to make money because how am I going to make ends meet? Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Immokalee, Florida.